Hey friends, and welcome back to my channel. I'm here to teach you some fun JavaScript every week. And this week, I'm trying to, I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone. I don't know if you know, but I have a website for my weekly show that was a vlog. Now it's a podcast. Hopefully everybody's excited about that. Uh, but it's a website called theconsolog.com. You can see it here. It looks like a great website. And what I use to actually make this website is a wonderful piece of technology called uh, Gatsby.js. <clears throat> Gatsby.js is one of my more recent favorite static site generators. And I've been through a lot of static site generators in the past. I've gone from WordPress, not a static site generator. I've gone to uh, Ghost, again, not a static site generator. Uh, then I try, I've tried Jekyll. I tried uh, Metalsmith, which is this very bare bones uh, static site generator and I even wrote my own static site generator and that was a lot, of, a lot of fun to learn what it took to actually make a static site generator for a long time my own personal blog was running on Reptar but then one day I came across this little project called Gatsby.js and it kind of blew me away so extensible so customizable and it just runs on React, Webpack, all the modern tools that I use as a front-end engineer every day so I kind of bit the bullet you know Ported my website over from Reptar, got rid of Metalsmith, and I use Gatsby now for my personal blog and for the console Labs website. And Gatsby has been working on version two for a long time, and it's currently in beta, and you can right now update your Gatsby blog to version two beta. I've already done it for my personal blog, but I want to do it with my console log website. So I figured there's no better way than to kill two birds with one stone via having a video showing you dear watcher had to upgrade from Gatsby 1 to Gatsby 2 while I then upgrade my console log website from version 1 to version 2. So this is more of like a live coding exercise but one that will be both beneficial to me and educational for you. So it's definitely a win-win situation. The first thing that you have to do to upgrade to Gatsby 2.0 is to look at the guide for migrating from Gatsby version 1 to version 2. I think there's an easy way to find this website. If you go to the Gatsby website, version 2 docs, and go to the docs on the side here, uh, releases and migrations, migrating from version 1 to version 2. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And I'm just going to go through this guide and just show you, the reader, how easy it is to do that. I already have my uh, console log website. So what's the first thing we need to upgrade to, our, to Gatsby version 2? The first one is to update our dependencies. So since version two is currently in beta, I need to update all of my Gatsby dependencies to next, which is a tag that points to the next version of Gatsby.js. So let's go to package JSON, find all my Gatsby things. I'm just gonna select all these things for fun and for profit. Go over here and just type in next. Just like that. Got that, now let's do a little bit of a yarn. Well, that does, let's look at the next thing to do. The next thing you have to do when upgrading from Gatsby 1 to Gatsby 2 is to manually install React. Before, Gatsby 1 kind of bundled React for you and didn't really let you have direct access to that. And now Gatsby 2 is taking pretty much, probably a better direction forward because it's trying to be a better citizen of the web ecosystem by having you yourself install the version of React that you want to use. So to do that, I'm gonna copy and paste these two commands. I'm going to do yarn add. Those are being added now. And then what we also need to do is install any plugin peer dependencies that I may have as well. I think I am using typography. Am I using it? Yes, I am. So, and is that being the case, let's also add these two things as well. Uh, let's cut to when this is done installing. <laughs> Everything always takes so much longer to install than I want it to. Yarn add typography and React typography. And then let's get to some of the good stuff, the stuff that takes a little bit more thinking to do. In the past, Gatsby had a special layout component that was kind of outside the usual constructs that Gatsby asked you to use. Am I actually using a layout for this website? I am I'm using one. Uh, so rather than having it be a exceptional case, which is what they had a layout B in version one of Gatsby, you actually have to now manually use a layout as you would any other React component. 
So the first thing to do is to rather than have it be children be this magical function, it's just a regular children prop. So let's find that down there. Change that. Save it. We're going to move that layout to uh, source components layout, which sounds like a grand old idea. Name this to layout. Move that over to components. Move it. Capitalize this so that I stay within my schema of all my other component names. And what I want to do from here is to import and wrap pages with the layout component, just as you would with any other React application. So for all my pages, <clears throat> which I have just two, I'm going to go import layout from component layout. And then let's do a little wrapperoony. Let's copy that, save that. Let's go to index.js. Let's do the same thing here. And here's my React fragment, which I can just now be layout. Get rid of the old fragment. I'm going to do with location, which I don't think I'm actually using this, so I can actually skip this. Any queries that I was using in my layout. So before, again, the layout was special and had special powers, whereas now they're trying to have things be a little bit more intuitive. And they've added this new static query component that lets you actually query your GraphQL representation of your, of your Gatsby uh, website. My layout wasn't actually fetching any data, so I am uh, squeaky clean in this respect. But in my blog, I actually did this as well. I had to, my layout was asking for some metadata that I was going to use in the helmet tags. And I had to just move the queries from being this export query into a static query. It wasn't too much work. Uh, there was one gotcha that I had with this is that a static query is, uh, by virtue of its name, static, which means that you cannot dynamically add variables to make dynamic GraphQL queries. And this export const query command is still a thing that exists for pages. So if you still use pages, uh, and you probably will if you have a Gatsby website, this you still have to use. Don't use static queries. I did that a little pre, uh, prematurely and got really confused. My blog didn't work. I was sad. I reached out for help from the Gatsby team. They were happy to help and got me back and sorted correctly. But uh, this is only four things you want to use just statically, not dynamically. I don't think I'm using any Navigate tube. That's an easy way to check that. Just search my repo. Good. Done. Right. Convert those. Cool. I'm already using ES6. So I don't have to worry about that. Move. I think everything else is uh, pretty much static quo. So I don't have to worry about. This is for if you have a more customized Gatsby website, which I have a very vanilla Gatsby website. So I don't have to worry about that as much. I might have a link. Let's see this. Link, no, let's look inside just the folder that I care about. Find in folder. I am. So this is saying that rather than link being exported from a separate package called Gatsby Link, it's actually now being exported from the Gatsby package itself. So this is a nice little find and replace, which I'll just do. Uh, you gotta change this to that, and then change this to that. And let's also go to cool. So that should be all done. Input GraphQL from Gatsby. So for all my pages, well, my queries. Now I have to actually have GraphQL be a explicit import from the GraphQL library, which is going to be a great step in a good direction in the Gatsby project because now things are much more explicit, less magical. The, le the more magic that are in a, that is in a project, the more confused that I get, and the more confused I imagine newcomers get as well. So having these things be nice and explicit is definitely a step forward in a great direction. No queries here. This is making a query, which is using the GraphQL tag, which means that I actually have to uh, import this from GraphQL to make sure that it still works in version two. Save that, put your updates for me. See if I'm using this, found action creators search, I am. So this is asking a simple rename, bound action creators. They found a name they liked better than bound action creators. Let's just do a little uh, command D to select all these options. Rename that, sweet. Path context, let's see if I'm finding that anywhere. I am down here. This is not being made to page context because who doesn't love renaming some things? Images, I don't think I'm using that. Delete nodes API, I don't think I'm using that. Spokes of query names no longer required. 
That's nice. That's a nice little optimization. I don't have to actually have it query when I don't actually use it anywhere else. Inline CSS. I think I think I'm good. I think I got everything that I need to do for this. I think everything else has been pretty much the same. So let's try this out. Let's do yarn start and let's do fingers crossed and see what happens. Oh, I found a little warning here that I'm not importing GraphQL when it's asking me to. I'm using GraphQL down at the bottom. That makes sense. Well, that's right. For my templates, I need to also update that as well. Let's kill that. Got some nice little errors for me there as well. Can't always get it right in the first try, unfortunately, but you know, that which does not kill you makes you refactor. So, let's import this from here. And then, where is it whining about no layout? Error can't resolve in source pages. Don't need to have all these right there. And this is still utils. Let's try this again. And this, my friends, is web development because things never work right on the first go around. This is looking a lot better. Things look a lot more green, a lot more blue, which I guess is the right color that you want it to be seen here. More errors. The relative module was not found. 404. Down, down. Ah, silly, silly. Save that. And source pages index. Ah, silly, silly. Oh, look at that. It compiled. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, would you look at that? Doesn't this localhost look the same as what's on there? That's a site for sore eyes, no? I think it means that this is almost working. <laughs> Well, because we moved layout from being a special component to being just a regular component, which means that for our templates, which we're using as also pages, just dynamic pages, because that's how we're making every page, we have to also then wrap those in a layout component as well. So let's do layout for that, layout for that, layout for that, layout for that. Let's save that. Let's go to this. Let's go here. I believe this as well should be layout and layout and we save that and bada bing bada boom success let's go 6 46 that's uh that's looking pretty good if I do say so myself I think that's all we have to do to upgrade for, from Gatsby 1 to Gatsby 2 the website is looking pretty good I'm going to do a little bit more regression testing QAing this make sure that it looks still as good as I want it to be, but I'll do that on my own time. You don't need to watch me just QA and make sure things look as they are. Uh, this is going to be kind of what I'm going to push. Actually, let me, let's, let's do that together. Let's actually uh, get check out uh, a new branch to upgrade to Gatsby uh, 2.0. And then we're going to do, uh, I'm going to go here, which is my new favorite way of doing things. We say feature. I follow the uh, standard release log way of doing uh, version names. So let's do upgrade to Gatsby 2.0. Commit that, we're gonna push that. And now I can go to the console log, see my branch, open up a PR. Woohoo! Create the pull request. And then because I'm using Netlify, which is the host of this blog, it'll actually create a preview of this website online for me to see, rather than me just seeing it online locally. Well, this run. Uh, but by the time you watch this video, I imagine this PR will be merged in. I think I'm going to do a little bit more QA because I want to make sure that this doesn't break everything because uh, the podcast is now powered by the RSS feed and it's just not good practice to have things break when you push new releases and that's why I am my own personal QA team. But I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial, open, upgrading from uh, Gatsby 1 to Gatsby 2. The process was pretty painless. If you have a more customized Gatsby installation, you might have more pain but for now, I'll leave you with that and hope to see you again next week with a new video. Bye-bye.